excuse me. I'm sitting on my shirt tail. <laughs> okay. There we go. That's better. You know how when you accidentally sit on your shirt tail and it starts choking you on. Greetings, one and all. Welcome to Tom's Hip Rod. Then you start feeling lightheaded and your the room starts spinning and then you pass out while you're in the middle of recording a video. <laughs> yeah. Hope that doesn't happen again. Greetings one and all and welcome once again to Tom's Hit Parade. By the way, I invite you to hit that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up if you like what you see, leave me your thoughts in the comment section, and share this video with your friends. I'd really appreciate it. So how are you folks doing today? I hope you're doing well. Uh, yes, today's order of business is bargain bag for the month of July. I can't, but the months are just flying by this year. What, what gives with that? It's like time was always in motion or something. Anyway, so uh, yes, you guys know the routine by now, I think. Uh, in case you're new to my channel, a brief uh, wrap up here. Bargain Bag is my monthly hunt for buried audio treasures in the form of a mystery CD grab bag uh, compiled from the budget wall at Epic Seconds in downtown Eugene, Oregon. I guess eight CDs. I don't know what's in the bag until I open it. And uh, before I get into the new bag, I review what was in last month's bag in rough order from Castoffs to Keepers. Uh, there are always some keepers in here. I have never had a month that didn't have one keeper, at least. And there might even be uh, no months without at least two keepers. Anyway, I can't remember right now. But anyway, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, first off, I did not bother listening to this CD because I had already bought it. I actually bought it like four months earlier at uh, St. Vinny's Thrift Store. Uh, thought I was going to really enjoy it. And it ended up just kind of growing growing cold on me pretty quickly. So I decided I did, decided not to listen to it again because uh, it was it was it had just recently uh, I recently gotten rid of it. So uh, yes, in vogue uh, they are. Uh, that being said, they are one of the premier uh, R and B girl vocal groups of the nineties. Yeah, yeah. This was I think this was their first album. I'm not sure, but this was dated 1990. So yes, very, very end of the 80s, beginning of the 90s. They were they were pretty good. As I said, just not good enough for me to want to keep. Uh, the next one, the Mars Volta. This is their album, Amputecture. <laughs> interesting, interesting title. Uh, before I realized what the album cover art is, they are dismembering or amputating a statue, you know, an, an architectural feature. So Amputecture. This is kind of strange stuff, I've got to say. This is very much, uh, I don't know if you'd call it progressive rock, but um, very, what, what am I trying to say here? Um, Avant-garde kind of stuff. Experimental, that's, that's the word I was trying to think of. Uh, at, at, least, at least this album is, in my opinion. Uh, was not my cup of tea. I just did not find much of anything to really enjoy. Um, I have never been much for prog rock in general. Uh, there are very few exceptions, um, and I don't I don't know why. I don't know why I've not been able to get into prog rock. Um, I've gotten into other stuff in the last few years that I didn't think I was ever going to get into, so I'm holding out this hope in the back of my head that maybe I will eventually get into uh, more into uh, uh, prog rock and that kind of stuff. Uh, the next one, I thought I was going to like these ladies at first, and forgive this uh, jewel case, but it is very... Uh, Dirty and scuffed up, so it's going to be kind of cloudy on the camera. Uh, the Donnas. Uh, this is their album, Spend the Night. Um, a An all-female rock group. Uh, almost bordering, bordering on punk rock. Uh, thought I was going to like it, but uh, yeah, just after the first listen, it just kind of fell flat for me. Uh, not that they're not talented at what, at what they do. Just, uh, just wasn't quite my thing. Sorry to say. Uh, then we're getting into the we're getting into the maybes here, uh, the brand new heavies. Uh, these guys were there was more jazz kind of stuff in this than I thought there was going to be. Uh, a bit more of a jazz influence. Um, I honestly cannot remember. I'm going to give this one another listen because I, to be honest, cannot really remember of all the CDs. This is the one that I least clearly remember when I listen to it. Uh, so I am definitely going to give this one another listen. But we're getting now into the stuff that. I think I'm going to keep. 
Um, I had tried these guys once before, uh, was not impressed with uh, what I'd heard, but this one, uh, this one kind of clicked with me. Uh, Elbow. This is our album, Leaders of the Free World. Some good, um, some of the bass lines in some of the songs were really good. I almost want to say they were funky, but, you know, not really, not that heavy beat kind of funky. It was just they kind of had, kind of had a little bit of an attitude, you know. Just that That's the way I hear, heard them anyway. But uh, that was the first thing that I kind of uh, caught my ear about these guys. But yes, I'm definitely going to listen to this one a few more times. Uh, <clears throat> Excuse me. So yeah, <laughs> track two is called Piggy Bugger. Picky Bugger, not Piggy Bugger. As in, quack, quack. no, Picky. Uh, so yeah, interesting album. And uh, this next one, I like this one enough that, spoiler alert, I uh, picked up the subsequent English language album uh, on a St. Vinny's crawl that I did just yesterday. So, so you will be seeing that in my haul video coming up soon. Unless you've seen it already. Not sure what order these videos are going to be in. Uh, but yes, Mark Anthony. Uh, this is his uh, English language debut album, self-titled. <clears throat> Excuse me. But uh, yes, I Need to Know is the big hit on here. And he does a Spanish language version of, his, of it as well. And what there was another song that I really liked. I don't know if it was... I'm not sure if it was a single or not. I'm not well-versed on Mark Anthony's discography, but uh, I kind of like this one. And then this this is another one, kind of like Elbow, that um, I had listened to another other albums uh, recently, and it did not do a thing for me. I got rid of it. But this one, I kind of liked. Uh, Acoustic Alchemy. This is their album, Against the Green. And perhaps one reason why this one clicked with me is the title is kind of uh, has a significant meaning. Uh, this is unlike a lot of the music in the rest of their discography. They are, uh, as their name implies, they're an ac acoustic instrumental duo, and but these guys put some more uh, <clears throat> some more beat heavy kind of stuff in this. Uh, got a little bit more, uh, <clears throat> again, a little bit more of a funky kind of a, an atmosphere to it. A little uh, more, as I said, a little bit more beat heavy stuff in here. So I, I kind of like that. And a little more energetic overall than their other albums are. So yeah, I thought I would. I, I'm definitely going to keep that one, and uh, I might try exploring their discography a little bit more now that uh, this album has clicked with me. But the winner of this <clears throat> of this lot of CDs, sorry, my voice is going, um, is John Fogarty. This is a live album called Premonition. And this was, I read a little background on this um, after I did the unbagging of this CD. Apparently he had been uh, in some legal scraps with the other members of CCR and was basically not allowed to sing their songs, or at least not be, not allowed to record them. I can't remember if there was a distinction on that, but uh, uh, this was the first concert album that he did after those uh, disputes were settled. And so he sings a lot of his old CCR hits, sings a lot of the uh, his uh, solo hits, and his voice, this was done in 1998. Oh no, this, well, at least the album was put out in 2004. He has not lost, at this point, he had not lost a single bit of his voice. That that kind of howly singing that he was, uh, you know, that you heard on CCR 60s hits was completely intact on this. So, depending on when this was recorded, you know, he has maintained 100% of his voice uh, up to that point, at least. Uh, so, yes, I was seriously impressed by that album. Uh, my sister was a CCR fan, kind of got me into the group. I've got a two-disc uh, singles collection of theirs, uh, so I, I rather rather like their stuff. And, of course, um, one of his, his probably his biggest solo hit, Centerfield, is on here. And, uh, so yeah, and also, as a live album, he kind of... Uh, has a little banter back and forth with the audience here and there. So that's always fun when live albums include that kind of thing too. So yes, a pretty good set of CDs from last month. But now let's go ahead and dig into this bag as has been kind of the ongoing saga uh, these last, actually these last two years. Um, long story short, I bought and I bought all the CDs that are in these bags and I bagged them myself, but I bought so many of them uh, what's what is eight times twenty four? That's how many CDs I bought. 
Uh, so, you know, bagged them all in one big session. So 99% of what was in those bags, I don't remember what there was, but I remember two CDs that I still have not uh, unbagged yet. That is Play by Moby and the soundtrack from Schindler's, Schindler's List. Or did I already get Schindler's List? I can't remember. No, I didn't. So yes, Schindler's List is still in here somewhere, in, in one of these bags somewhere. So I keep thinking that this bag is going to be the bag that, you know, each month's bag is going to be the bag that, that one or both of these CDs are in. So let's see if this is the month. That's the long drawn out story I was trying to, the point I was trying to make with that story. To make a long story even longer. So, let's go ahead and see what's in here. But we can't tell from that. Okay, the first CD is... Oh, the Braxton Brothers, Steppin' Out. I'm going to assume these guys are related to Tony Braxton. I am not sure. So it'll be interesting to hear this. Let me see if... Trying to orient the bag so that I can easily show you what the CD is. Here we have, oh, John Tesh, The Millennium Collection, Heart of the Sunrise. I don't even remember picking this, picking this one up. Oh, it is a two-disc set. Uh, disc one is Favorites, and disc two is Live Recordings. So, yeah, I kind of like John Tesh. He's kind of been a punchline of uh, snoozy New Age musicians, but... Uh, I've always kind of had a soft spot for his music, so, yeah. It's very interesting cover art, isn't it? Nice. Anyway, what do we have here? Luther Vandross, uh, Dance With My Father. Oh, I've heard about this album, and that's probably one of the reasons why I picked it up on the bargain wall when I saw it. Uh, Buster Rhymes, Queen Latifah, Beyonce, and Foxy Brown. Uh, up here as guest artists on this album. So <clears throat> this was done in 2003, so it might be one of Beyonce's first um, recordings that uh, where she wasn't in... Was she in TLC? I can't remember. Anyway. Then we have, oh, Sammy Kershaw, a country artist. Don't go near the water. I don't plan on going near the water right now. So, uh, yeah. The country stuff, especially from the 90s, yeah, this is 1991, 90s country has seems to have had one of the worst track records for me as far as wanting to keep the CDs. I don't think I have kept a single 90s country album, and there's been a, f a fair share, not a huge amount, but a fair share of 90s country in these bargain bags. Uh, so it's kind of, you know, the bargain wall was filled with what doesn't sell at regular price, so they have to knock it down to almost nothing, so... Kind of, in that respect, it's kind of a miracle that I've kept as much as I've kept from these bargain bags, huh? Anyway, next up we have, oh, Labyrinth. Beneath Your, Be Beneath Your Beautiful is the name of this album. I, th I think he's an R&B artist. This is a six-track uh, EP, so be interested to listen to that. Then we have Brian Hughes. Uh, oh, it's a uh, jazz album. One to One is the name of the album, I think. So, uh, yeah, it'd be interesting to hear this. Don't know what to say about it, because I don't know what it's going to sound like. And the next to last CD in here is... So, oh, Sixpence None the Richer. And this is their self-titled album. Does it have... Well, this is interesting, because the back panel, and I don't know if it's deliberately upside down or not, has no track listing on it. So I don't know if this has their album, uh, their, their single in it. Uh, Kiss Me. Yes, it does. That's the, the track listing is on the outer rim of the CD, if you can see that. So, cool. That'll be a fun one to listen to. That was, yes, Kiss Me was a soundtrack staple back in the uh, 90s. And then the final CD is, oh, Jude Cole, A View from Third Street. I have heard some things about Jude Cole. Don't know very much about him. 
fact, about all I know about him is that I've heard about him. That's specific, isn't it? Anyway, so yes, that is it for this bag. And yes, those two CDs, Play by Moby and the um, Schindler's List soundtrack, are still in one of the five or six bags left. Yeah, August, September, October, five bags left. So yeah, this will be an interesting bunch of CDs to listen to. So, that'll do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If so, hit that like button and share it with your friends. And before you go, drop me some feedback in the comment section. I'd love to know what you think. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, hit that bell icon so you don't miss future videos, and click on my username to browse my past videos. Links to my socials and favorite fellow YouTubers are in the description below. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and remember, life's too short to be a music snob.